Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's quick hit, getting the most out of dashboard filters to support intuitive workflows. My name is James Travelluni. I'm a solutions consultant with QuickBase. Uh, started my QuickBase journey a little over five and a half years ago. Started on our care department as a technical service representative. Um, really learned my foundational skills with QuickBase back then. I really consider that the internal QuickBase university. So I was able to support um, a wide variety of customers in all different types of industries and use cases from small business all the way up to our largest enterprise customers. Um, recently moved into our solutions consultant role where I really uh, partner with existing or prospective QuickBase customers to figure out what is a good use case for them and how that can translate into QuickBase applications. So for today, our key takeaways will be to understand the basics of dashboards, uh, dashboard filters specifically. Um, you can utilize dates, text. Uh, we'll cover a few limitations there as well. We'll understand how they work, um, how you can map to one or several reports. And remember that we're just matching values here. So another important thing to keep in mind is you'll wanna prep your application. So you'll wanna understand which fields, tables, and reports you'll need. And you'll wanna make sure that your data is structured to support that. So for today's agenda, we'll do a quick overview of filters. We'll prep our, um, go over um, best practices for prepping your application. We'll do a quick demo and then we'll conclude at the end. All right, so our filter overview, the basics. So filter types, uh, our new dashboards have two distinct types of filters, text where we're simply matching values and dates where we match values that fit within a range that you select. So when creating a filter, you can simply select either type. And then once this is done, you're able to select any field within that table um, of your reports that match the filters field type. And then you can decide to apply that filter to every report or select number of reports on your dashboard. And you can see here in this example, we have a date filter um, with a different date range. So just to quickly cover some limitations, like I mentioned earlier, uh, dashboard filters only support date and text fields. So what do you do if you want a filter uh, of a different field type? You can use, utilize a formula text field with a type conversion function. So in this example that you see right now, we'll cover in our demo, I'm utilizing the user to name uh, type conversion to take a user field and uh, allow that to be a text field so that we can utilize that in our dashboard. And when you see here in line three, uh, it's just a quick example of um, different ways that you can utilize this, um, this function. So by default, the user to name function will show first name, then last name in that order. Um, but depending on how you set up your, your user fields for data consistency, if it's a left first or last name first, then you'll want to just use this additional um, context here. So you can see where it says user's name, we have the regional man manager field, and then the LF stands for last first. So prepping your app. Before you begin to create your filters, prepping your application is key to a clean and insightful dashboard. Understand which reports you want to include on your dashboard and which tables these reports are coming from. And really think to yourself, what makes sense to filter? So depending on the report that you're using, sometimes the, the filters that you have don't make sense for them. So think of that um, while you're setting this up. And you'll also wanna know how the data logically flows from one table to the next. And in this screenshot, you can see a relationship diagram from the application that we'll be demoing today. Um, one example would be that I have a regional manager field on the plants. And I wanna make sure that I can use that as a filter for my dashboard. So what we can do is since all of these tables will be related to the plant in some in logical flow, what we can do is make sure that regional manager field is looked up into every table here for that way they can be utilized on all of our reports. Okay, it's time to demo. All right, cool. So 
Um, first things first, what we're looking at here is a, a quality assurance dashboard. So um, we're tracking plants, products, issues, losses, and Kaizen's here. So we have a quick dashboard that we're looking at right now. We have a, a couple different um, filters already. We have one for product and one for our loss category. So we can easily come in here, select what we'd like, and these will filter out. One thing I wanted to point out here with um, the reports that we have on this, um, if we take a look at this report right here, this is um, loss duration by loss reason. So I chose to utilize the loss category field here so that when we're filtering on a report like this, the entire area of the pie doesn't get consumed when we select, for example, if it was a loss reason, this would all get filtered to one single thing. So it's good to have a field that's not the series of your report being that filter. So in this case, um, that's what I've done here. Um, a few other things before we get into the rest of the demo, I just wanted to point out here. You can always click right here if you wanna see it in full screen. There's also a little icon if you'd like to see it in a presenter view. So you can quickly go through each chart that you've set up here in a nice presenter type view. If I jump back out of full screen, you also have the ability to share this dashboard. And specifically with filters, you have the ability to embed these and you can allow or not allow the embedded dashboard to actually show those filters. So that's something to keep in mind here as well. And then of course, we always like you to give feedback. So if there's anything that you'd like to be able to do with these dashboard filters, please let us know. Very cool. So before we go ahead and create any new filters, what we're going to do is prep our application. So if I take a look at our plants table here, you can see we have a regional manager field. So right now this is a user field. So we're gonna do that type conversion with a formula text field so that we can utilize that field throughout all the reports on our dashboards. So I'm gonna go ahead, go into settings here. And we'll add a new field. I'm just going to name this regional manager filters. We'll select formula text. We'll add that and we'll do a quick little formula. So let's just quickly take a look at our function. So you can see here, um, you just type in user to name, the user field, and then if you need to, like I mentioned earlier, you can format it whatever way you'd like. So FF stands for first name first, and LF stands for last name first. So if you have a user field you're currently using and you're using the left uh, last name first um, formatting for consistency pur purposes, you might wanna do that as well for your filters. So for right now, I'm going to just go ahead and do user to name. And then I'll grab my regional manager. By default, it does first name first, so I don't need to call this out in this formula. Awesome. So now that we've uh, created our formula text field for the regional manager, uh, the next thing that we need to do is create our lookup fields so that we can use this field throughout all of the different reports on our dashboard and filter by it. So I'll quickly jump into our relationships. We'll just make sure to grab that field and get it through the entire flow. And just bear with me while I do this quickly. Make sure we're correct, selecting the correct fields there. Let's move on. We'll just get through this real quick. All right. And as I'm doing this, you'll notice um, every time I add a lookup field, it's gonna drop the table name of the table that we're looking it up from. So you can see plant then product. I typically like to delete that out of the, the field label just so it's nice and clean. Um, but it is good for you to understand where that field originally came from if you'd like to keep it. 
So I'll jump back here again, just a couple more to go. Bring it into losses. And finally, we'll bring it down to Kaizen's. Perfect. Okay, so our application is prepped. We're ready to begin adding some new dashboard filters. So let's jump back to the dashboard. All right, so once we're ready, go ahead and click this padlock icon to unlock our dashboard so that we can begin to edit it. I'll go ahead and click this little plus icon. And we'll create our first filter. So we'll have to, to name the filter. So in this case, I'm just going to name it regional manager. You can also add a brief description here. So what will happen is when someone hovers their mouse over the filter itself, a little message will display of what you've set as your description. For in this example, I'm gonna say used in all reports. And this would be a good spot, for example, if maybe you weren't using this um, filter for every single report on your dashboard, it'd be useful to know which ones it's used for. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and choose our filter type. So in this case, it's text. And then below here, we'll just um, map the fields from each table into their respective reports. So for the first one here, I'll select that, make sure we have the correct fields. Perfect. Looks good. And our last one here. And before I go ahead and click save, you'll also notice that you have these toggles here. So maybe as you're building this out, you want to have those fields ready to go. But maybe for this first one, you don't want to be filtering on that just quite yet. So you can easily enable and disable these filters uh, and then easily come back to them and what you have them at. So perfect. I'll go ahead and save this. Now we have our new regional manager filter. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this dashboard back up and let's try this. So we have a few options. I can click Chris's name and then we can go ahead and apply. Now you can see these different reports getting updated just like we wanted, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock this quickly. I just wanna point out a few other things. So you can, if you click these little um, icons here in the top right corner of your filter, you have a few options that come up. So you can either move these left or right. You can disable the filter, delete the filter. So for example, if maybe you're, you're doing some testing, you want that filter there. Um, in the future, but not quite yet, you can just disable this. So it's there on your dash ready to go, but when you're ready, you can go ahead and enable it. Cool. So I'm going to add one more filter here and keep in mind, you can only have up to four filters per tab on a dashboard. So we're gonna use our final filter here Let's do a date. So I'm gonna call this one date created. And then we'll choose date range as our option. We could add a little description if we need. For now, I won't. And then we'll come in and select the fields that we want. So I'm just gonna use the built-in fields uh, on each of these tables. So it's really consistent on what it's intended to be. Perfect, just as simple as that. I'll go ahead and save it. Now we have a date range that we can start to filter on. And we know since the date created, that's when all of these records were initially created. Very cool, I'll go ahead and lock this before we go ahead and 
and start testing. Click the little calendar icon to pull up uh, your date ranges. And we can come from here and select really any range that we're looking for. All right, so that's just a, a quick little demonstration of how you can start to create filters and make sure your application is prepped for those filters on your dashboard. So let's jump back over here. As we conclude, just remember what our key takeaways were. We are here to understand the basics of dashboard filters. Uh, we can utilize dates, text. And we understood what our limitations were. You can only use those two field types. You only have up to four filters per tab on your dashboards to utilize, so utilize them wisely. Um, and then if there's any different types of fields that you'd like to use, remember we have formula text as an option and you can utilize some type conversions to get those, those filters that you'd need. We understood how they work. They map, you can map them to one or several reports. Uh, and we're really at the end of the day, just matching values. One of the most important things to remember is you need to prep your application. Understand where these fields, tables, and reports are coming from so that when you create these filters, they're as meaningful as possible for you. Uh, and of course, you got to make sure that the data is structured to support what you want that final output to look like. So thank you so much for attending this quick hit. I hope you learned a lot. Um, please see all of the other exciting um, uh, sessions throughout Empower, the other quick hits. Um, check out the, uh, the Empower Slack. We'll be messaging back and forth and really like to, to see your uh, feedback as well. Thank you so much.